Cha Sanya Sanad Eva Sidim Samadhi Gachati. Translation Not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. Purport the renounced order of life can be accepted when one has been purified by the discharge of the prescribed form of duties which are laid down just to purify the hearts of materialistic men. Without purification, one cannot attain success by abruptly adopting the fourth order of life, sannyasa. According to the empirical philosophers, simply by adopting sannyasa or retiring from fruitive activities, one at once becomes as good as Narayana. But Lord Krishna does not approve this principle. Without purification of hearts, sannyasa is simply a disturbance to the social order. On the other hand, if someone takes to the transcendental service of the Lord, even without discharging his prescribed, prescribed duties, whatever he may be able to advance in the cause is accepted by the Lord Bodhi Yoga. Sva alpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat. Even a slight performance of a such a principle enables one to overcome great difficulties. All right, so Prabhupada is describing, well, Krishna was describing that you don't get freedom from reaction just by stopping work. We may think, give up our job, we won't get any reaction, but there's still there's still going to be reactions because karma, there's karma and we have karma from the past and it causes us to get different pleasures and pains in life. But some people think the way to avoid misery is to stop work, stop all work. So Krishna says, Renunciation cannot give us perfection. It's not just by being renounced that we become perfect. That's not on either. You see, Krishna's encouraging Arjuna to work. He wants Arjuna to fight. Arjuna's got the idea that Arjuna's thinking he should avoid the battle, he should avoid the fight. But Krishna's pointing out, well, if you stop, if you don't work, you're not going to get free of reactions. You're still going to have reactions. You still have karma. And you have to know how to deal with it. And so we can't stop work anyway either. You can't stop all the work. You have to do something. Everyone's forced to act. You're still going to eat. You're still going to move around. You're not going to stop and do nothing. You can't stop. So moving, you get reactions, the karma is going to come. So some people think maybe become a sannyasi, become a monk, will get away from everything. But Prabhupada points out that's also difficult. You have to prepare for that. You have to, it's first, without purification, you cannot abruptly become a sannyasi. You have to prepare, there's preparation. So you practice the preparation just like some people they practice, they do brahmachari first and they're brahmacharis for a long time and then they take sanya. And other people, maybe they're grihastas and then they become vanaprastha. And then from vanaprastha, then they become sanya. Just like Prabhupada was a grihastha and then he was renounced from the family, he was away from the family for some time, he was living in Vrindavan. And doing different things and then he took sannyas so not that you leave home and then the next day you take sannyas you have to prepare you have to prepare for the detachment cultivate the detachment 
takes some time, you have to purify the heart. But what is better is to do transcendental service. So at the end of the purport, Prabhupada talks, is take to the transcendental service. Even we don't do our duties, but if we do some service for Krishna, what Prabhupada describes here, buddhi yoga, then a little, a little advancement on the path will save us from the danger. That's another verse in the Bhagavad Gita. In the second chapter, we had that verse. Svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahatobhaya. In this endeavor, there's no loss or diminution. And a little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. The danger is that we have a human body. And if we don't use it properly, then the next life we may be degraded to the animal body. So that's very bad. If from a human body you become a dog or a, a pig or something in the next life, that's terrible, very bad. So what's better is to make a little advancement. Even we're not able to go back to Godhead, but if we make a little, a little progress on the path, that will save us from becoming an animal in the next life. That's very regrettable. From the human life, if you have to become an animal in the next life, not good. Maharaj, I was reading this morning uh, the daily thought of Prabhupada I received on my telephone. And he was saying that if you chant Hare Krishna, you do your duties, but still keep your uh, bad habits and uh, thinking, oh, anyway, I chant Hare Krishna and Krishna will purify me. It's a very bad attitude. Uh, still keeping my bad habits, thinking that will be Krishna will take care about it. So, and he said, in your next life, you will take birth as a monkey or an animal in Vrindavan. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's not very, it's not the, the way it has to be. Yeah. So, right. Yes, Prabhupada, actually some people were angry at Prabhupada about this, but Prabhupada said that, he said, these pigs, the hawks, which they have in Vrindavan, he said, these, these were all sadhus in their previous life and they, were, they had done some sin and they had to take birth as hogs in Vrindavan and it's like their last birth before they can go back to Godhead. Some people were very upset Prabhupada had said this. Mm. But Prabhupada speaks the truth, you see. Prabhupada doesn't hide the truth, he's telling the facts, you know, that because people do these sinful things. And if they do something sinful, then can it go back to Godhead? Just like you said, somebody's chanting Hare Krishna, but he's also doing sins. So he's not going to get the benefit of the holy name. That's like building a fire, but pouring water on the fire at the same time. Or it's described to be like, like the bathing of the elephant. The elephant takes bath and then throws dirt over his body. So people come, sometimes they come to Mayapur here, and they bathe in the Ganga, and then they go on and do more sinful activities. And then they come and bathe again in the Ganga. <laughs> so what's the use? They didn't change their heart. They didn't change their hearts, so they're not, they're not going to get out of material life. And they may even take animal bodies because they're sinful. So it's very bad, very regrettable, yeah. We want to try to save people from these things. But people are so fallen, they're so ignorant, very difficult. Okay. 
गुरु महाराज हियर स्वल्पम अप्यस्य धर्मस्य लिटिल एडवांसमेंट मींस हाउ मच गुरु महाराज इज इट टिल एवरीडे चैंटिंग और टिल इनिशिएशन और और वन डे चैंटिंग इज आल्सो विल सेव देम और हाउ मच इज अ लिटिल it's like asking what's your lowest price right <laughs> what's, the, what's the lowest price you give me mm, a little advancement yeah well prabhupad did say somebody just takes prasadam they eat prasadam you know one time it can save them or somebody chants hari krishna mantra one time one time chanting the holy name it can save them it gives them the chance for again the human life So it, it can be really very small, swalpam, alpam. Alpam means very meager, very small. So they didn't do much at all. They only chanted maybe one time, but they chanted. So that that the seed of bhakti is there. They'll get the chance to go on, to continue. But we saw Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, of course, he's the example of somebody who fell down. Now he was a very advanced yogi. He was very advanced, but somehow he got attached to the deer, and so he became a deer in his next life. So we don't want to take the risk. We don't want to take any chances. You know, a little advancement. How much is a little? <laughs> if it's so meager, if it's so small, then you know you won't be put in a very good situation. You could not expect to get a very good situation where you could cultivate Krishna consciousness easily. It would be difficult. But it does say that Bhagavad Gita does say it saves us from the da greatest danger. The danger is that we become an animal, so we get a human life. But you know, there's so many humans. We want we want to have a human birth with the devotees. That's important. We want to get the association of devotees. I mean, just to have the human body, that's not enough. You've got to get the association with devotees, then it's much easier for you. And so we should try to put as much as we can into our bank account, right? Just like you have a bank account, you want to, you know, you save up for the time when you're going to go on holiday or something. So we want to put as much as we can into our spiritual bank account. Do as much chanting, do as much service as we can. To save ourselves from this inauspicious situation. I have a question, Guru Dev. Yes. Is there a chance of, uh, in that case, is there a chance of taking birth in a devotee family? Little advancement, or even a little more than that? Well, yeah, you have to to take birth in a devotee family. You have to be quite an advanced yogi. Krishna says in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. That if you practice yoga for a long time, but still not successful, then you would take yes. birth in a devotee family. Okay, then it's there are a, chances. It's a very good birth to be born in a devotee family. Because from the beginning of life, you get the opportunity to chant Hare Krishna. And to take prasadam, to see the deities. So it's very special. And you see the children who are born to devotees, that really they're very special children. And the more religious the parents are, then the better the quality of the children. Okay, thank you, Gurudev. Guru Maharaj, one more point here. They are saying even without discharging his prescribed duties. Uh, so, if somebody doesn't, will he not get some sin because he is not discharging his prescribed duties? Well, the point is that if you've taken up devotional service, then 
all of your duties can be forgotten about because you've taken up service for the Supreme Lord. So you're no longer obliged to do these prescribed duties. They can be overlooked because you've taken up the higher, the higher purpose in life, which is to do service for the Supreme Lord. Just like you may be a debtor, you may have debts, but all your debts can be wiped, they can all be overlooked because you're doing service, you've taken up devotional service. You have no, no longer, you no longer have material responsibilities. Just like Prabhupada explains, for somebody who is a, a sannyasi, a sannyasi, he said, he's a walking dead man. You know, you may, have, you may have had a wife and children before, but once you become a sannyasi, you have no longer any responsibility to them. You know, Prabhupada was married and he had five children, but after he became a sannyasi, he doesn't have to worry about them anymore because he's a sannyasi. He's freed from these material responsibilities. So prescribed duties are like that also. You may have prescribed duties, you know, you're, you have a, something you're supposed to do like that. But because you've, if you've taken up devotional service, then you don't have that responsibility anymore. You're freed from that. That's the understanding. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But if they prematurely, if they are not very advanced in devotional service and prematurely they give up prescribed duties, then it's not good, Guru Maharaj, or still it's okay? Well, it's, of course, it's not very good, but it's, it's good that they tried, even though they were not successful. And Krishna says, you know, that they tried to do something, and even though they didn't do it, they didn't succeed, but okay, they have to come back and take up their duties again. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's understood, you know, they were trying for something very difficult, but they were sincere, they were trying, they wanted to do, they were just not able to succeed. So, it's accepted. You know, many people may try, they don't all succeed. But let them try, give them a chance, they should be encouraged. You don't know who's going to succeed. But uh, somebody's sincere, they wanted to try, and they, you know, they prepared themselves, you know. They prepared, they practiced, and they had, they, they, they were, you know, they were ready, but still they found it difficult. Just like Prabhupada explains, he said it was difficult for him to leave his family. It was difficult you know, for some time, you know. But, you know, gradually he was out of sight, out of mind, right? He didn't see them, so he could forget, about, concentrate on his preaching work. But it's you know, difficult. Difficult thing to do, to cut off the family ties, affection for the family, children, and so on. But it's necessary, ultimately, for spiritual life. So one, one tries and not able to do it, all right, then he has to go back. But at least he made the attempt, he tried. So in ISKCON, we see like in our own society, they've had some, you know, we had people, we had a number of failures, people taking sannyas. So they've made a lot of different rules and restrictions now about it, about who's able to take sannyas and the requirements, what they have to meet before they can do it. 
and now that it's much better than it used to be. You see, in Prabhupada's time, the men were very young, and so it was difficult for young men. You know, when a man is 20 or 25 or 30, he may have the mood that he wants to take sannyas, and he may take sannyas, but then when he gets to 40, then he may think again about it, he changes his mind, <laughs> you know, he may not want to continue. So sometimes it happens like that. You know, when they get to midlife, when they were very young men, they want to do it, but then in middle life, they think, you know, maybe it's not so right, maybe it's not so good. They change their mind, hmm? go back, <laughs> which is not supposed to happen, but it, it happened. It did happen. So nowadays in ISKCON, you know, we, people have to be a bit older before they can take sannyas, before they can renounce. And similarly for people becoming full-time devotees, like who want to live in the temple and become full-time devotees, they have to come regularly for some time and they have to understand. You know, previously in Prabhupada's time, People could come one day and the next day move in the temple. You know, <laughs> you know, it was very sudden, very premature. So some people would come and they'd come for some time, then they'd go. <laughs> so nowadays what they do, people come and, you know, they have to come for quite a while and they have to understand more and try everything out and people get to know them. Then they can understand who's actually qualified for this. And even nowadays for initiation, it's like that also, that sometimes we find people coming for initiation, they want to get initiation and they come to get initiated and after initiation you don't see them again, they just disappear. So we want, they would like to make sure that people who come for initiation nowadays should be qualified and they do things, they have different things like they have a disciple course and you have to get recommendation from the temple authority. These kind of things are done nowadays before you can give initiation. This way, you know, people can understand properly what they're coming into, what they're getting involved in. You know, sometimes people would come and they would surrender everything and they would give everything, all their money and everything. And then when after some time they wanted to go, they say, I want my money back. <laughs> you know, after they've given everything, then they come and they say, no, I want all my money back. I give you that money, I want it back. <laughs> so, so many difficulties like that. So we're very cautious nowadays. Understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, in uh, 4.24, it says, um, a Krishna conscious person is always dovetailed with the supreme desire. And in uh, 3.30, it says, the living entity is to become subordinate to the desires of the Lord. So Maharaj, what is the desire of the supreme Maharaj? Well, the desire of the Supreme is that we should all become his devotees. We should engage in his service. What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Krishna says, surrender to me. He says, uh, give up all material religion and, take, and surrender to me. I will free you from all sinful activities. Then in the ninth chapter, at the end of the ninth chapter, you have the most confidential knowledge. And Krishna said, engage your mind in thinking of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer obeisances unto me. This is the most confidential knowledge. So Krishna has these kind of desires. He said, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform, they should be done as an offering to me. So that's Krishna's desire, offering things to him. Like he says, patram pushpam phalam toyam, offer a leaf, flower, fruit, water with love and devotion. You could say that's Krishna's desire. 
Krishna's desire is that we become devotees. And he's telling us what we should be doing, what should be our activities. And so, of course, he comes in the Kali Yuga as the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to tell all of us to chant the holy name, that you have to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Lord Chaitanya spoke the Shikshastikam. He said, Kirtaniya Sadahari, always chant the holy name. That's the Lord's desire. And we should try to fulfill his desire. We should chant. Yeah? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I have a question. <clears throat> uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became a sannyasi quite uh, young, huh? He took sannyasi. Yes, 24. 24, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But sure, it's a special one. I mean, uh, you said before you have to wait a little bit older to get sannyas, but Chaitanya was a special. Yeah. Uh, Nowadays, you have to wait. You know, people like, you know, in ISKCON, we have people like Jad Pataka Swami. He took sannyas when he, I think he was 19. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord Nityananda took sannyas too? Lord Nityananda? No. Lord Nityananda, he was married. Yeah. He had two wives, two sisters. Mm -hmm. And the, he has one son. It, the, the, well, there's one son and there was one daughter also. Ganga Devi was the daughter and the son was Virabhadra. And he never took sannyas, Nityananda Prabhu? I never heard he took sannyas. Okay, okay. He traveled. And you took uh, sannyas at what age, Maharaj? You took sannyas? I was 40, what, 45? 45. Okay, next verse, um, uh, maybe uh, Tanmay Prabhu, do you want to read this? 3.5? Sure, Mataji. Nahi kashchit kshanam api jatu tisthati akarma kriti karyatehi avasa karma sharva prakriti jair gune Everyone is everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. Purport. It is not a question of embodied life, but it is the nature of the soul to be always active. Without the presence of the spirit soul, the material body cannot move. The body is only a dead vehicle to be, worked with, to be worked by the spirit soul, which is always active and cannot stop even for a moment. As such, the spirit soul has to be engaged in the good work of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, it will be engaged in occupations dictated by the illusory energy. In contact with material energy, the spirit soul acquires material modes. And to purify the soul from such affinities, it is necessary to engage in the prescribed duties enjoined in the sastras. But if the soul is engaged in his natural function of Krishna consciousness, whatever he is able to do is good for him. The Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.17 affirms this. Tyaktavasa Shadharmam, Charanam Bhujam, 
हरेड भजन अपाक अपाकवो था पतित ततो यादि यत्रा क्वा भवद्रम अभूत अमूस्या किम को भरता आपतो भजतम शाधर्मता If someone takes to Krishna consciousness, even though he may not follow the prescribed duties in the shastras or execute the devotional service properly, and even though he may fall down from the standard, there is no loss or evil for him. But if he carries all the injunction for purification in the shastras, what does it avail him if he cannot, if he is not Krishna conscious? So the purification. Process is necessary for reaching this point of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, sannyasa or any purificatory process is to help reach the ultimate goal of becoming Krishna conscious. Without which, everything is considered a failure. So you can see this verse. Prabhupada quotes this verse in relation to what we were talking about. That even a person may fall down from his from the standard. There's no loss. There's no harm. Hmm. But if somebody else, they just simply follow all the duties of the shastra, but they don't develop their Krishna consciousness. And what's the good? And so the attempt, the attempt itself is good. To make the attempt to try to become Krishna conscious, to to become. Surrendered and to get free from Maya, to get free from material entanglement, that is very good. And so this verse is interesting because it shows the nature of the soul. Nature of the soul is to be active, and if you try to make yourself inactive, you try to do nothing, then it, it doesn't work because it's the nature of the soul to be always active. We like activities. We want to do something, and if we're not doing something, then we will be engaged by the material nature. The material nature will force us to do something. The material energy acts on us, and we get up, we walk around, we do things, we talk. So many activities. You cannot just simply do nothing. We're always breathing. And talking and so many activities always going on. Even when we sleep, the mind is still so active. So how to stop all these activities? You cannot. The nature is to be, but we have to learn what is pure activity. And pure activity means acting in Krishna consciousness. When we learn to act in Krishna consciousness, that is the. Proper activities. Right, karma, Krishna karma, Prabhupada calls it in the eleventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada describes Krishna karma, working for Krishna, doing everything for Krishna. Vaishnavis. Taking care of her daughter and her husband, and cleaning the house, and cooking, and it's all for Krishna. Everything in Krishna consciousness. All right. Any questions on this? Uh. Maraj, uh, this uh, jnana yoga is uh, this speculative. Uh, it's mental speculation, and this sankhya yoga is uh, the analytical study of this of spirit and matter. Um, is is uh, sankhya yoga part of jnana yoga? Or are they are they related in uh, some way, or it's uh, sankhya yoga is uh, uh, an entity of its own? Yes, yeah, Sankhya Yoga is an entity, entity of its own. You could say it's, uh, you know, one of the six philosophical systems which are given in the Vedic literature. There are six different darshans. You know, there's Nyaya, which comes from Gotama, 
and then Patanjali Yoga, and then Kapila Sankhya, and you have also uh, you have um, Karma Mimamsa Jaimini, and you have also Vyasa Vedanta, and then there's one more. I think it's uh, I can't remember now who is it. Any, there's one more, it's the impersonalist philosophy. So the best, of course, is Srila Vyasadeva's Vedanta. And it's the top, most philosophical system. So Sankhya from Kapila is one of the six darshans. And Jnana, Jnana Yoga, uh, Jnana, you get, where does that come in? To these darshans well there are different conclusions you see these different some people they will establish that the brahman is the truth and even kapila sankhya you've got the atheist kapila generally they talk about that kapila sankhya is the atheist kapila but from srimad bhagavatam we know kapila muni to be the incarnation of god and he teaches theistic sankhya that's in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But ordinary people who know about Sankhya, they only think about the atheist Kapila. Who, and atheist Kapila, he's teaching everything comes from matter, that life comes from matter. So it's a philosophic, it is also a philosophical speculation. And you'll see like uh, Ramakrishna mission people they follow, they, they describe themselves as Vedantists. So Ved Vedantists means jnanis. Like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he's also a jnani. He's a jnani. He also knew, he, he was teaching the, the Shankaracharya sannyasis, the Mayavadi sannyasis. So Shankaracharya, uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was in charge of the Jagannath Puri temple. And he was a famous... Uh, impersonalist. So the impersonalists are jnanis. So you can see this Astavakra, Ast, I think it's Astav, Astavakra, he teaches the impersonal philosophy. And impersonalists, they think Brahman is the supreme absolute truth. And Krishna comes from the Brahman. And so Ramakrishna people, Ramakrishna mission, they're also, they teach like that. They teach the Vedanta, they're called themselves Vedantists. And they will preach about the different Upanishads and generally they won't touch so much on the, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam. They speak Bhagavad Gita though. They do touch the, you know, a lot of impersonalists, they all give their impersonal commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. So, Jnanis, you could say Nyaya, logic, Gotamas from Gotama, they like that. And they also follow impersonalism. So, there are different kinds of Jnanis. Yes? Are you there? Uh, uh, yes, Maharaj. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Vaishnavi? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think we, we, we should go for chanting. Oh, uh, thank, chanting. Okay. We'll do chanting, right? Yeah. Very good. Yes. Thank you for reminding. Yeah. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.